Welcome to another episode of OUinsider.com's podcast. I'm joined by OUI staff writer, Colin Kennedy. Colin, how you doing, man? I'm doing well, RJ. How are you today? Uh, I'm good because we have news to talk about. And in this industry, one of the things that I take a look at quite a bit is, you know, news or lack thereof. And with Mother's Day coming and going, we had kids announcing. And then earlier today, uh, I think we ought to get started with this, quite honestly. Uh, Zach Evans is enrolled at Texas Christian University. Apparently, I'm still the only person that says Texas Christian University. But uh, all of us, I mean, that's their first five star ever in the history of the program. And this is not necessarily the kind of guy that Gary Patterson usually goes out of his way to go get. But now you have the second highest rated recruit in the 2020 class uh, behind B. John Robinson, right, in, in the Big 12. And all of a sudden, Texas Christian is going to be a lot of fun this year. Yeah, I mean, they, they made some moves in the offseason. I think, obviously, OU fans kind of had their eyebrows pick up when they saw Mark Jackson go to DCU. And mm. I thought, you know what, that's a good fit. I'm sure we could elaborate on that if we want to. But the big news of the day and probably the rest of the recruiting offseason right now is Zach Evans joining DCU. I mean, it's kind of crazy. They go get Quentin Johnson from, from Texas. He becomes, what, their second highest rated recruit in the program at the time. And then mm-hmm. now they get the number one in terms of Zach Evans. Uh, look, I know that TCU recently has had some guys deal with off-the-field issues that have hurt the program. I mean, Devontae Turpin is a prime example. When he left, that program took a major step back. And Jalen Rager, he, he kind of struggled with it. A lot of guys just saw what can happen when players make detrimental decisions away from the football field. That being said, I think Zach Evans is a kid that has made strides and is wanting to to improve who he is. And at the end of the day, that's all you can ask for because, I mean, you're going to take a guy who has comparisons to Adrian Peterson, especially when you're at TCU, who I don't think we're talking about this enough. I mean, not only do they get their five-star running back, first five-star in program history, but it's also a great fit at a position of need right now. I mean, Darius Jed Anderson and Shiloh Alonalua both left the program and are now undrafted free agents with the Dallas Cowboys. So, they lost two of their most contributing running backs this offseason, and they don't really have very many answers at that stage. So getting Zach Evans, that fills that position, and getting someone to help out Duggan, I mean, continue to develop as a quarterback, that's a huge issue. So, I mean, Evans is going to absolutely tear it up on the football field if he's able to play. There's no doubt in my mind. But overall, I think TCU taking this risk is, is calculated. I mean, they needed someone at running back. They wanted to get someone to – to have them talking about this program across college football. And if it pans out, I mean, TCU could very, really benefit from this moving forward on the recruiting trail. So I'm excited to see how it pans out. But, I mean, this is a monster move by Gary Patterson and the Frogs. Yeah, two things that you said I want to touch on, which are great points. One is Cavante Turpin and what he meant to that program when he was returning kicks and when he was catching passes, coming out of the backfield, those sorts of things, uh, basically doing what Jalen Rager was doing for them a year ago. And Turpin gave Oklahoma all kinds of fits, and we're, we're used to that, right? Uh, the other point that you made about Quint- Quentin Johnston, who we thought was going to end up at Texas, with the, the Snapchat commit announcement, shouts to him, that uh, coming out of Temple. I was like, okay, I'm down with this. I'm, I'm fine with this. Uh, you know, uh, Friend, uh, Shayhan J. Araja works for, uh, works at, I should say, TexasFootball.com covering high school football and college football in general. But he made the joke that TCU should switch to the wishbone, change my mind. I'm going, that's a good way to get Quentin Johnston to transfer. So I, I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, that said, I think it's really not into what Max Duggan was able to do in, in the run game because, I mean, there weren't a whole bunch of bright spots for Texas Christian on the offensive side of the ball when they played Oklahoma, but one of them was watching Max Duggan run all kinds of wild. And I, I'd i be interested to see what a Texas spread type of look looks like with Zach Evans back there. And I guess that's kind of the point. Now you get to do some stuff, right? You you have a home run hitter at tailback, and you have a guy that we're all going to watch. And now I'm looking at their non-con, and you're talking about Temple. You're talking about Wagner. I mean, uh, I got to take a look at it to remember who the third team is, though. Uh, let's see. Texas Christian. But you're also talking about a team that all of a sudden gets to jump up and have something to say about this Big 12 race, which I found to be really interesting. Because outside of Oklahoma, what do we expect? We expected Texas to maybe be there, but both of their coordinators are installing 
new schemes, and you also don't know what you're going to get from Sam Ellinger in that scheme. But more than that, uh, Oklahoma State is supposed to be something like a dark horse to, to go and win it because they return their three-headed monster in Chuba Hubbard, Spencer Sanders, and Tylen Wallace. All right, so I'm looking at the 2020 schedule. Oh, I was totally wrong. Uh, California, so that ought to be fun. Prairie View A&M and SMU. Ooh, that SMU game could be cool. Oh, no, that SMU game could be a brawl. Oh, and it's at SMU. It's at Gerald Ford. Oh, that now I'm packed. Not, I'm here to tell you right now. Oh, man, I was just going to say, like, because that's, I mean, TCU thinks it's better than SMU and, and you know, so forth and so on. Because, like, you, you'd be the guy to ask about this. Does it go TCU, SMU, North Texas? Is that how it goes there? Yeah, absolutely. I would okay. say TCU, SMU, North Texas. I mean, okay. SMU just recently surged. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, and then they get Oklahoma State in Fort Worth. They got to go to Morgantown. They get Kansas State in Fort Worth. They got to go to to Waco, but that ought to be good. They get Oklahoma in Fort Worth. They get Iowa State in Fort Worth. Got to go to Austin. And they get Texas Tech in Fort Worth. Got to go to to Kansas. Look, that's a that's a decent schedule, dude. Yeah, I mean they, they get OU in TCU, so you get the conference favorite at home. Mm-hmm. I think you get. SMU is a big time game that a lot of people are going to be watching in the mm-hmm. non con. So, look, I mean, TCU's taking this and they're just saying to themselves, we got a chance to make some moves. And so, when you pick up a guy in Zach Evans, like, hey, I mean, go for it. So, I'm excited to see how it works. I, I think if I were Texas Christian, I would assume the same as we're talking about. Maybe the Big 12 is a little bit more wide open mm-hmm. than we always talk about it being I mean Oklahoma State don't get me wrong the big three coming back is huge and I'm a huge fan of all three of those guys but at the end of the day you still got to play with 22 24 guys on that field and I mean three you can only speak to the extent of impact that they can have so Oklahoma State it kind of varies for me what they can actually pull off Baylor you just don't know what the health and some of the losses that they had in the offseason Iowa State maybe they make a surge I mean who knows at the end of the day TCU has a very real opportunity to make some push in the conference. And I think another reason you brought up that this is really fascinating for me is Duggan, because, I mean, now you can play, like you're saying, with what you want to do offensively. I mean, the, the zone read, speed options, some of those schematics they can pull off with Evans and Duggan in the backfield, I don't know how a defensive coordinator would really be able to plan for it because TCU, quite frankly, hasn't had some sort of running presence like that in a while. So, Overall, this is a really nice scheme fit. It's something that's going to help Duggan's progression and development as a quarterback. And it makes TCU just that more dangerous in a conference that may be a bit more wide open than we perceive at this stage. It also proves to me that Gary Patterson can recruit when he wants to. Uh, again, I should say. Mm-hmm. I should prove again. Because like, still, uh, up until this point, his greatest coup to me was Ty Summers. And I picked Ty Summers not because he was highly you know, regarded as a recruit, but because Ty Summers was committed to play quarterback at Rice. And Gary Patterson convinced him to play linebacker at TCU. That That's a switch, man. Like, he, <laughs> And then he ends up making him play in and then moving him back to linebacker. And because he's so versatile, they call him Captain America. That's still one of my favorite recruiting stories. It's like, how do you turn a quarterback into a linebacker when he has an offer to play FBS quarterback right now? It's like, wait a second, that's wild. Um, and it, and it, it worked because, mm-hmm. I mean, the guy's still with the Green Bay Packers, right? Yeah, yeah, no, you're right, you're right, it worked. And that's the other part about Patterson. He has trust a tremendous track record for getting guys into the NFL and then them having successful careers as well as being, you know, top three-round picks. I mean, we just saw Jalen Rager. Uh, we saw Jeff Gladney. Before that, there's Ben Van Goo. Uh, there's LJ Collier. I mean, we can keep going. And then, you know, Dallas Cowboys think enough of his entire backfield to sign them all. You know, it's just all the eligible ones. So that's that's tremendous.